Components are reusable blocks of code that are used to create a more modular and maintainable code base. You can imagine them like Lego blocks, and they fit together to create your app. Looking at this web page, we can start to see how this might be broken down into components, each with their own code that gives them their structure and their behavior. It's often the case that a view app will have components within components. For example, this component here may have this buy it now and add a cart button both nested within it. Now let's look at how we can create a component. Then we'll return to our actual project and see how components can make our app more modular. We'll register our component by saying view.component, and the first parameter is where we specify the name of our component. Here we're creating a component called product, which will have its own behavior based on what is contained within its second argument, which is the options object. This is nearly identical to the options object of the view instance. Now, instead of plugging into an element in the DOM like we do in the view instance, a component has a template property, which specifies the structure of your component. There are different ways to construct a template, but for now we'll use a template literal with these backticks. These backticks will allow us to add another element. But when we do, we get this warning. Component template should contain exactly one root element. Right now, the h1 and h2 are siblings, so this template would be returning two elements instead of one root element. So how can we fix this? All we need to do is wrap these elements in a div, and now this div is the root element of the component template. Problem solved. Just like the view instance, our component can contain data as well, but notice here that data is a function that returns a data object. Why? If it was just a data object and you were using that component throughout your app, each copy of that component would be sharing the same data. If instead we return a fresh data object from a data function, then each component will have its own unique data. What if our component is nested somewhere, such as within this parent component, which has some message data? Since our component has its own isolated scope, it cannot reach up outside of itself for its parent's message data. Instead, we can use props. A prop is a custom attribute for passing data into components. In order to receive props, a component needs to explicitly declare the props it expects to receive using the props option. So here we're saying that our product component will receive the prop called message. So now we can use message in our components template and that will render. So you might be wondering what it looks like to pass props into a component. So here in our HTML, we have our product component, and as you can see, it has that custom attribute called message, and the data we're passing into message is hello. So when that component renders, we'll see hello appear on the page. You can imagine props almost functioning like a funnel on your component, which you can feed data into. When declaring your component's props, it is recommended to specify requirements with Vue's built-in prop validation. In order to do that, we can switch out our props array with a props object. Inside here, we can make an object for our message prop and specify its data type, if it's required or not, and even give it a default value. Now that we have an understanding of how components work, let's code our first component. We want to turn everything that's in this product into a component of its own. So we'll take the HTML, and we're going to turn that into the template of our component. First, we'll register our component by saying view.component, give it the name product, and then we'll paste that all within backticks into the template. Now we need to add the data as well as the methods and computed properties associated with that component. Now remember, we need to transform this data into a function that returns this data object. So we'll copy paste it right into the function. And there we have it. We've got our template, we've got our methods, and we've got our computer properties all on our new product component. All that's left to do is to use that component, and we can see our information is still there and it works just the same. Now to see how helpful these components can be, let's just paste in two more product components, and as you can see, they're showing up right below the initial one. So what if our product component needed to receive some information? Let's say we have premium in our data, and that specifies if our user is a premium user or not. So in this case, the user is premium. So let's pass that data into our component as a prop. So we'll add the props option, and inside that we'll add our premium prop, and it'll have an object that specifies its type as a Boolean and required being true. 
Now on our product component up here in our HTML, all we need to do is add that prop as a custom attribute. And then we're passing in premium from our data and we're gonna to bind to that data. So if it changes, we'll receive that new value. Now in the template of our component, we'll say user is premium and then use an expression to display if that's a true statement or not. So we'll say premium here and premium is the prop itself we passed in. And as you can see, we're displaying user is premium true. So our prop is effectively going into our component and displaying. Now let's make this a little more realistic and combine what we learned in lesson seven with computed properties with components. So let's say shipping is shipping and shipping will be that new computed property. In that computed property, we'll say if this.premium return free, otherwise return 299. When we refresh, we see shipping free, so it looks like it's working, but just to double check, when we change premium to false on our view instance, shipping does change from free to 299. Awesome, it worked. For this lesson's challenge, create a new component for product details, which receives the details data through a prop called details. A link to the code playground is below.